Coach Matt Marcus as our special guest. Before we start this interview, I would like to ask you if you can provide a bit of background information on the sport you have played, as well as your organization, Mojility. Got it. Um, so I played all sports growing up, but um, I ended up sticking with soccer uh, sophomore year in high school. And uh, I grew up in Palo Alto, grew up in the Bay Area. Um, I started taking soccer more seriously sophomore, junior year of high school. That's when I was on one of the top club teams in the area um, and was trying to spend time outside of training on my own, uh, getting better. At that time, though, there was no other additional training. It was just kind of go out and just kick a ball at a wall or go out and shoot. I was actually very fortunate in one of the, the, the best players in my club team. Um, I asked him how he got so good. And he was just like, I used to just go to my garage and just knock the ball off the wall and just do different sorts of trapping. And he actually ended up playing professional MLS for like 12 years. Um, very good player. Uh, so anyway, wasn't highly recruited out of high school. I ended up going to Santa Cruz, University of Santa Cruz, uh, California, Santa Cruz. It's a division three school. Um, I mainly went there because I wanted to stay in California. Uh, it's a UC school, so it was a good school. And um, the coach was really passionate. Um, and he wanted me to go there and was really uh, passionate about me going there. So I ended up going and I liked a lot of things about it. But one of the things I realized there is I wanted to push my level. Um, we ended up going actually to the division three national finals, uh, when I was there, which was pretty cool. Um, but I was ready for a new challenge after we ended up losing in the finals to Messiah. Uh, so I decided to transfer to division one school. I wanted to stay in the Bay area. My parents were still in the Bay area and I wanted to stay in the Bay area. So I sent messages out to Stanford, Cal and Santa Clara and Santa Clara was the one that showed the most interest. So therefore I ended up going to Santa Clara. Um, didn't start initially. Worked my way in, and by the end of my first year, was defensive MVP, which was awesome. Uh, my time at Santa Clara, we won conference twice, and uh, I was an academic All-American. Um, I would say those are the most notable accomplishments. And then in my senior year, just after the season, I actually uh, was in OMA's class and got a call, and I ended up getting drafted in MLS. I didn't even know I was, yeah, didn't know that was gonna happen. So that was kind of cool. Uh, I got drafted by Kansas City, and I went and played in the MLS for three years. Um, it was a good experience. It was definitely different, a lot different than club, a lot different than college. Um, it becomes a job, and it's just it's just completely different. Uh, I liked a lot of parts about it, um, but after my time there, I decided, you know what, I was ready to move on. I wanted to go back to school and finish up school because I had to leave school early to start, and um, so I went back to school. Um, I finished up school at Santa Clara. I started coaching college. I started coaching club. And that's kind of when the idea of Majority started because I just had played professionally and now I'm coming back and I'm recognizing how much a need there is for high level uh, detail oriented coaching. Um, so that's kind of like when the idea of Majority started. Uh, I did it a little bit on the sub Majority. I started in like 2012, but it was just really just primarily summer camps when it first started just because I was coaching full-time at the highest level. I was coaching college. I was coaching academy level teams. So I just didn't have time to do much other uh, coaching. And then about a year ago, I decided I want to start getting into doing this full-time. Why? Um, I wanted to coach coaches, one. Um, two, I, I still think there's just a huge need for high-level detail-oriented coaching uh, especially for players maybe on the, the lower level teams that don't get the same love as maybe academy level players. Um, and in my eight months or so of having Mojility as a, doing it full time, is it's amazing the players that come to Mojility on a weekly basis that may be on the second team or the third team, like within two months, they automatic, they're, they're, they're going to be either playing more on the team they're on or they're going to jump to the next team um, just because they're not getting those details uh, that they can get at Mojility. Um, and it's not just the details, it's the mentality. Those are like the two things that we're really, really uh, focused on that kind of like our pillars. Because um, having played professionally, having coached college, having coached academy for years, uh, the thing that differentiates players as they move up levels, it's the details of the game. So it's understanding the details and then being able to execute the details. So that's the technical piece and the physical piece. Um, and then the, the physical movement piece is included. That. So details of movement, understanding and technical ability combined with mentality. So like, you know, just willing to work, willing to deal with adversity. Um, that's honestly, that's what defines the levels. Anyone that says otherwise hasn't played at the highest level, um, but it's all about details. 
um, and your understanding of the game, details in your ability to perform those actions with the ball, and then details in your movement, um, and then mentality. That's that's honestly what defines players, and so that's kind of what we focus on in mobility, um, and uh, the whole uh, coaching coaches piece. So all the coaches of agility are college players. I think we have about 25 on staff currently. So they're all college players are going to be college players. And I think that's huge. Cause like, I know when I was in middle school and high school and there was be maybe a college player that comes to my club practice or you go watch a college game. Like, Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Uh, that's where I want to be. Um, and so me being able to help those guys, cause even though I know they're in college already, they still don't have, a complete understanding of all the details of the game. Um, so me being able to help them as players, and then now they can turn around and help the the players they're coaching. Um, it's a very it's a, it's a very cool thing to watch, and it, it helps us uh, spread our message and um, ultimately help more players, which is what we're trying to do. Sorry, that was really long, and it was really that was deep. <laughs> Did I probably cover like every other topic you're looking? It's perfect. It's perfect. So the first question that I wanted to ask you is. How important is mentality for the success of a youth athlete or even like a college student athlete? Huge, absolutely huge. So again, I think I broke it down as uh, it's details and then it's mentality. Mm -hmm. It's details for soccer, it's the physical, it's the technical, it's the soccer understanding piece. And then it's the mentality of being able to work and work when you're tired and work with adversity. And um, so mentality is huge. And from mobility, like the whole idea, so we have mobility and we have this, uh, uh, this this thing GSD is just kind of like GSD hashtag GSD and the idea of that is just the mentality piece like mm -hmm. you don't just train you're not just going training no you're you're GSD you're, you're getting stuff done you're efficient you're working you're grinding um, so that's why uh, ever since I started Magility I, like, I wanted to have something that kind of like worked with the mental side Magility for sure details gonna learn more than you're ever gonna learn anywhere else but then the GSD mentality as far as like okay, you're not just training, but you're training the right way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, mentality is huge. Okay, so personally, I've struggled through a lot of mental roadblocks, one being confidence. And a lot of people have said, go show confidence on the field and don't be afraid of making mistakes. However, through my experience, it's not really been that easy. And many of us know that we have to gain confidence, but don't really particularly know how. So this kind of leads to my next question. What are some things that youth athletes can do to better strengthen their confidence? A couple things. First and foremost, this is like by far the most important is train the right way. Because mm -hmm. too often I see players, they go to a field and they're just kind of messing around or they're at training and they're not really training seriously. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden they get to the game on the weekend, they expect to just turn it on. Like that doesn't happen. That just doesn't happen. You need to train like it's a World Cup final and you play the games like it's a World Cup final. That's the mentality piece. So mm -hmm. first and foremost, you got to train the right way. Okay. Um, and that means like staying switched on, making sure it's your focus, making sure it's game realistic. That means for everything when you're out with a ball, uh, as well as when you're at team trainings. So super purposeful trainings. Um, the next piece I would say is uh, look for small wins. So what I mean by that is like, okay, let's say I'm really struggling with my right foot, right? And you're, let's say you're left footed. Okay, well, then maybe go strike a couple balls with your left foot. Like, hey, I can do this, you know, work back to revert back to what makes you you um so like as i say like you know what i'm i'm really struggling with like some technical piece okay well then i'm really good at the agility maybe i do some agility work to get my confidence so now i get back to the agility piece or the, the technical piece and now it's just it's just easier um another thing is uh, again like with the small wins idea is um go and make it like a make something simple where it's something where it's like just something where it's just uh let's say i'm struggling with shooting just go and put the ball in the corner one or two times, right? You do it one or two times, you're like, hey, I can do this. And then all of a sudden you get the confidence back of, hey, I can do this. And now it's just a matter of doing it re repeatedly. And that's the difference as you move up, move up in levels too, is like anyone can put the ball in the corner, but it's how consistent you can do it. And when you're lacking confidence, look for the small wins. Go and play to your strengths and then go in, train to your strengths, and then also uh, go and be successful um, doing something that you're confident doing and then uh, work from there. Um, and then one of the things I think is big is being able at times to pull away and just like have fun and enjoy it. So like if you're training with teammates, maybe getting, staying there a little after and doing like a little fun juggling competition or doing before training even. So it just kind of like relaxes you. Um, cause I know when I struggled with confidence as a player, when I was playing pro, it's always cause I was always, you're always so worried about everything. So if you can just relax a little bit more by maybe having a little bit more fun, um, it's a great way to kind of reset the dial. I think that's very important to have fun. 
because it's uh, it's like the main idea of why you're playing the sport. So, so um, a lot of athletes also develop expectations for themselves, causing a hindrance in growth because they basically strive for perfection. Now, these athletes have a fear of making mistakes. They feel as if a mistake maybe can jeopardize their team or maybe they'll upset their coach or even parents. Now, since they're afraid, they don't perform at their best. What advice would you give to youth athletes who are struggling with the thought of making a mistake? Mistakes happen. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, you got to get over it. You can't dwell on mistakes. For me, this is the easiest way that I learned to not dwell on mistakes. What's the object of playing the game? Obviously, to have fun, but once you're competing, you're trying to win. If you're dwelling on a mistake, that's not helping you win. So why do it? You go and you have a bad pass. You can't be like, oh, why would you go throw your hands up in the air? You're just allowing the other team now time to counter and take advantage of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's the mentality of can't dwell on mistakes. Mistakes happen. Focus on the present. Okay, what now? What now? What now? What's going on now? What's going to happen next? What's reading, reading the game? Um, those pieces, I think, are, are, are big. Um, so, yeah, you, you can't dwell on mistakes. You got to just – Instant positive reaction, something I learned at an early age, IPR. So whatever happens, on to the next play, on to the next play. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the next topic I wanted to talk about is the importance of effort and how mentality really affects it. So we hear like the term push yourself, but similarly to co confidence, it's really hard to push yourselves when we have thoughts of giving up. So what are good and positive things to think about when undergoing an intense exercise or when we're really tired in a game? Yeah, this happens at everybody. At everybody, they hit the wall and they're like, oh man, I just want to stop. Um, and there's a lot of things, there's a lot of ways. Like, I'm pretty good at this because honestly, when I was growing up, I wasn't the fittest kid in the world. Um, but I think any team that I had, even even college player or professional player that I played with, would say I probably was the most good player on the team. And it was just playing mental games with yourself. And so, what it would be like, let's say if it's a fitness exercise and I'm like really, really tired, right? Well, typically, if you're doing a fitness exercise, it's over some sort of distance. So ways to look at it maybe is like, if it's over some sort of distance, maybe look at it if you're on like a soccer field. Okay, I just need to get to that line. I just need to get to that cone. I just need to get to that turn. So just small, small wins. Um, just get to that line, get to that turn. Another way is like trying to like change your frame of reference. Um, so for instance, like let's say you're running like a full field sprint, like down and back. Well, once you touch that far line, you're already halfway done. Like this is the tail end. Also, you've you're already done with the one turn. The turn's the hardest part anytime you're doing any sort of fitness. The stopping and going is the hardest part. So it's thinking about like those types of wins. Get to the line, get to the line. Okay, now I'm over halfway. Oh, I'm over halfway. Oh, I'm done with three reps. I'm only doing five. I'm three fifths away there. Um, so that stuff is huge. So like setting achievable goals and getting them. Um, and then sometimes, though, it just sucks. Sometimes it's like hard. But that's ultimately what's going to define players is that mentality piece. And so you just kind of sometimes got to be like, what type of person are you? Are you a person that just gives in when it gets tough? Or are you going like, to put a little bit more work in? And just because you uh, maybe you don't go to where you wanted to be one day, but if you just pushed a little bit harder than maybe you, you would have normally, that's heading in the right direction. Um, one other thing for me, as far as uh, the, the mentality piece, is everything you're going through, um, you're running through a fitness exercise, you're trying to stay focused, it's all temporary. It's gonna be done. In the big grand scheme of things, it's really, it's not that huge a deal. And then the last thing that I use personally all the time was I think back to a moment where maybe if I concentrated a little bit harder, maybe I worked a little bit harder, and it would have like changed the outcome of a game. Like I remember having like a couple of vivid memories. One was I remember my second year, no, my first year MLS, I came on a sub in uh, first round playoffs or playing against Columbus Crew. When I was in Kansas City and we were down one zero on aggregate. So we needed a goal. We were at their place. I'm playing left mid and there's a ball that comes whipped in the box and I'm like running onto it. And I kind of can't see it for a half second. So I like hesitate. And then it like pops into view and uh, it was maybe like a foot out of my reach. And I was thinking after that, if I anticipated that a little bit faster, I would have kept my run going. I could have got on the end of it with a diving header. And I was like eight yards away from goal. And it was towards the end of the game. So guess what? That off season, I'm thinking about that constantly. And so every time it gets hard, I'm like, no, I got to stay focused. I got to work harder so that um, when that moment comes, um, I'll be ready to execute. 